Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us today. We will be starting in one minute. Hello everyone. My name is Anurag Dhavan and I'm the external relations officer at the University of Toronto Scarborough. It is my pleasure to welcome you all again to Hashtag. Unlike our first two, today's is a two part event, starting out with an introduction to Facebook advertising. The second part takes form of a skills building workshop where all of you would be able to work along on your computers as you set up your first Facebook ad campaign. Before we move forward, a few housekeeping announcements. I request if all attendees can please keep themselves on mute through the session. We will have some time to take a couple of questions at the end of part one of this session. So if you could please drop your questions in chat. We are also recording this session and the recording would be mailed out to all attendees. Moderating alongside me today, I'm happy to welcome Amelia Helpard. Vice President Operations for TNG, the marketing group at UTSC. Um, Amelia would be moderating the workshop uh, for us. Amelia is a fourth year student in the MIB program. Her past experience has been in strategy and marketing. And earlier in 2020, she returned from Sydney, Australia after completing a work term and a study abroad term. Thank you, Amelia, for joining us. And now to introduce our special guest for today, Dennis Melnick. Dennis is a UTSC management grad and presently the Director of Performance Advertising at Abacus Agency. He has 10 years of digital marketing and growth hacking experience. His strength lies in sharp analytical skills and granular knowledge of Facebook, Instagram, email marketing, and mobile first creative strategy. Dennis has contributed in areas of content production, customer journey development, value proposition, design, and brand building. He has worked with clients across a variety of industries, successfully handling media campaigns with quarterly paid social acquisition budgets up to $700,000 Canadian. Dennis's team is currently responsible for over $10 million in annual ad spend. It is my absolute pleasure to have you as our guest on Hashtag Today, Dennis. Uh, it's over to you. Thank you, Anurag. I appreciate it. Um, hello, everyone. Thanks for coming today and wanting to spend your Friday afternoon with me. I know it's uh, somewhere around the finals time, I'm assuming. <laughs> Haven't been to school for quite some time, but um, I want to make this time that we spent today together pretty productive, informative, and hopefully uh, exciting for some of you who would be interested in joining the marketing field after you graduate or who are pursuing their co-op term in marketing. I think this will add a lot of value. So with no further ado, let's get into it. So the first part of our two part webinar slash workshop will be focused on the, the theory. Um, so I will share more theoretical part about um, what Facebook is about, what the digital ecosystem is today. And then I'll share some of my examples of previous work that I've done, some of the case studies that we've uh, we're able to um, publish uh, with Abacus so that you get a, a good sense of how that theory was applied. And in the second part, for those of you who are sticking around and joining us, will actually make you, um, you know, the driver of this Facebook ads creation bus uh, in which you will create your very first, or maybe not the first, but you will um, have your first uh, branded campaign uh, live, well, not sort of live, demo live, uh, on Facebook. Uh, Anurag did a very good uh, introduction of who I am, uh, so I don't think I have much more to add to it. He added an extra year to my experience, which in fact I only count from 2011 when I uh, graduated from our co-op uh, program and I joined 
uh, one of the first uh, Facebook performance agencies in the world, pretty much. It was called Ad Parlor. That was in 2011. So since that year uh, and that date, I've been working primarily on paid social and digital marketing. Today, I, uh, I'm running this workshop uh, in, in a new role. I've just uh, been promoted to Director of Performance Marketing at Abacus Agency. Uh, I'm also a Blueprint Certified Professional, which is um, a professional certification that Facebook offers. Um, it's, not a, it's not an easy one to get. Um, you actually need to study and uh, you actually need to have a bit of experience running ads on Facebook in order to pass it. I hold two certifications um, for Facebook in that regard, a media planner and a media buyer. So um, I think I'm pretty proud of that. <laughs> and then um, overall, uh, for the last year, I've managed um, somewhere around $4 million in Facebook ad spend for clients that range between different verticals and different objectives. Um, but some of the most notable ones that some of you living in Toronto might know about it's grocery gateways, uh, food, uh, grocery delivery, um, grocery delivery uh, service by Longos. Uh, Toronto Raptors, we've handled some business with them, um, promoting their uh, score slice pizza campaign for Pizza Pizza Partnership. I've also um, helped Travel Zoo, um, a, a well-known brand in the travel vertical, um, get more subscriptions and more subscribers to their newsletter service. Uh, we worked with Ecom, such as Sparkle, which is a carbonating machine uh, that launched on the uh, that was first launched last year, and we helped them scale their efforts on Facebook, Google, um, YouTube, uh, and First Trade, which is a financial service uh, provider in the United States. Um, so, uh, a wide range of clients, a wide range of needs and, and challenges that come with them. So, I'll touch on some of the things that I've experienced. Um, but for the seminar, I want to give all of you a very quick rundown of what to expect, what's our agenda, what we're going to cover. So first of all, I'll spend a few minutes talking about the digital marketing as an ecosystem. It might be a good intro for those of you who don't know much about where, where the digital marketing stands today and where paid social piece falls in it. Um, then we'll touch on the very important aspect of consumer funnels and how the consumer journey is driven by multiple touch points and you know uh, interactions across multiple devices, multiple platforms, multiple types of content, uh, which ultimately make someone you know become aware of a brand that you you know you're launching to become a client and also to become a loyal client, someone who would refer other clients to that you know um, brand or product. Uh, then I'll talk uh, briefly about why I think it's a good idea to advertise on Facebook and why so many businesses jump on advertising on, on Facebook. I think there's more than 1.5 million businesses that are now advertising on Facebook actively. Um, and then we'll go into the nitty gritty part of it um, from the high level um, things that you hear about Facebook to actually learning about like what is the actual setup of the ads market, ads manager platform that you use to set up your campaigns, optimize your campaigns, and to actually spend advertiser dollars and turn them into you know, new customers. So I'll give you a rundown of the uh, ad account structure on Facebook. Also, we'll touch briefly on the four pillars of successful ad campaign launch, uh, which are kind of not, not a full exhaustive list of things that are uh, going to make your campaign successful or not, but I, the ones that I feel like the most important ones. And if, if I have time, I'll run you through um, two or three different case studies of my past work and connect the dots back to uh, the elements that I've used in a campaign, uh, the account structure that we've applied and, and how we use Facebook to achieve those results. So let's get running. Some learning outcomes. So what do you expect to get out of it at, by the end of it? So kind of what's in it for you? Um, well, you learn how Facebook supports full funnel consumer journey. You'll have a better understanding why millions of businesses use Facebook ads. You will discover four pillars of successful campaign launch. Um, you will receive practical insights based on uh, executions that I've had. So it's not just theory pulled out of the blueprint learning course. It's all based on my experience. Uh, so there's some uh, data validated stuff. And then you will become familiar with the ads manager dashboard, which uh, if anyone, you know, uh, meets you in a hallway, uh, some of your classmates or friends, 
they're about to launch some business or you know uh, do a drop shipping or you know do some side gig they type you on the shoulder say hey how can we get more traffic well you'll be pretty prepared to say i'm up for the job and i can run some facebook ads for you so uh, as a result you might strike a good partnership where you're going to be a media person and your friend will be a a business or a product person and both of you can set up a, a, a set up a shop basically and hopefully become successful uh, digital marketing ecosystem so it's a wild uh, wild world out there there's lots of channels lots of platforms serving all different goals and doing all different things i think this uh, little graphic doesn't even represent the full size and scope of different platforms that they are right now and some of them are used uh, to promote uh, you know some of them used to do paid activations others are for uh, content marketing others are blogs the others are you know video assets the others are mobile first uh, platforms and so it's a very um, large ecosystem that exists today and that is supposed to serve different groups of individuals uh, with different types of content with different uh, buying media buying models because um, some of them support you know models that where you can go and pay for clicks the others are supporting models where you pay for impressions for just showing your ads other support models where you pay for completed conversion events so affiliate models that exist there where you pay for you know a sign up or a completed sale and you don't pay for anyone who doesn't perform those actions so there's a lot of them and today specifically we're going to focus on the social one and specifically within the social one of the largest ones that's facebook and facebook is not just a standalone uh, platform which is known as just a facebook we use on desktop or mobile it also includes uh, a network a display network that is a, is an audience network they call it um, is a number of placements within Facebook um, that have reserved spots so you can uh, put your you know ads on inside uh, the articles inside the different uh, mobile apps then there's also Instagram which you're all familiar with and then there's also WhatsApp which have recently allowed pushing ads um, through from Facebook um, as a manager as well uh, how big is digital like how big is this industry well it's um, it's ballooning and it's and it's quite sizable and and most of its size is driven by uh, the increase in uh, social media advertising because this is the block that's been growing the fastest and the most and so uh, whereas many years ago um, you know search advertising and, and banner advertising the display ads were just the king of the hill uh, but then in 2011 uh, Facebook introduced its, um, you know, uh, advertising platform and started expanding and then the mobile uh, app and the mobile advertising solutions were introduced to the market. I think it was 2013 or 14. Uh, that's when it happened. And from that point on, uh, everything kind of flipped upside down and social has become um, the demand generator of all uh, platforms. And so now most of the businesses when they think of you know trying things out and getting in front of the clients first before they turn on google search ads or run display banner stuff uh, or do programmatic ads they always go to social because of the uh, things we're going to talk a bit later but um, basically social is huge and it's growing the important aspect of why social has you know, uh, gained so much traction in recent years and why so many businesses are putting millions of billions of dollars uh, on the platform is the fact that um, social um, is very good at generating awareness and consideration. So it's a great demand generation platform. Um, everyone um, in the universe goes through uh, a funnel. So some of our brands first want to get in front of us they want to create an awareness and exposure for what they offer and they try to appeal to us you know through different styles of advertising different messages um, but at the start they trying to go really broad and trying to show their um, you know show their brand and show their product to many people that not a lot of them might be uh, might become the buyers but in order to create a funnel they need to start with a very 
um, broad entry group first. So they need to appeal to a wide selection of audiences. Uh, from that point on, some people will drop off and the others will, you know, express interest. Uh, you know, they'll click on the ads, they'll watch the video to 100% of it, uh, whether it's 30 seconds or 60 seconds. And then they'll start, you know, poking around on the website. They start, you know, reading reviews. They start seeing other videos that these brand has uh, put up on their website on Instagram. And that means that people are now in the consideration stage. So they may not be ready to convert and buy or sign up, but they're definitely um, someone, something has definitely piqued their interest. And so now they're flying in the consideration zone. And then after that, if the brand um, is good enough at persuading and you know offering the solution that the people are interested in or solving a specific problem, then they might be able to convert some of those people. And therefore, you're going to create a funnel that has uh, a lot of people at the awareness, uh, less people in consideration, uh, and a fewer converted uh, clients that will then enter to additional um, you know stages of the funnel, which is creating a loyalty. Uh, repeat purchases uh, and referral, uh, which is adv advocacy. So that um, if, for example, you look at any of the purchases you've made or any of the brands you love, for example, Apple, um, you probably have been sold on their ads first somewhere. You've seen their advertising, you've seen their billboards in the cities. Um, you love what they're putting on TV or maybe on mobile. And then you entered into a store, you looked at their products, you spoke to uh, the, I think they're called like genius consultants or something like that. Um, and then you finally saved enough of money or you waited for the, you know, for Christmas to arrive. And since you asked uh, Santa to bring you the new iPad, you got the new iPad. So you converted, you became uh, an owner of this new product. And so you're a customer now, but then you started showing it to your friends and you start using it maybe at school. And so the loyalty was built. And then after that, you maybe, um, you know, bought some uh, other additional products and therefore you went through a full marketing funnel. Um, and why Facebook is so great and why so many people uh, turn to it is that it has the tools and features to um, create a full funnel marketing experience. Uh, and the one important aspect that plays to it is that uh, we all love going to social networks and we use um, we use mobile phones throughout the day. I think my phone records about 5.5 hours of uh, screen time for me on average and, I, and I'm not the heaviest uh, mobile user in the world. Um, and out of those 5.5 hours per day, I think a good hour and a half or so are spent on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, um, Twitter. And so uh, those minutes are valuable because they're valuable um, for the advertisers. And, and, and that means that an advertiser can get at least an hour of screen time, an opportunity to show their ads and connect to the uh, consumers uh, around the world on these apps. Um, so why, why advertise on Facebook? So like, why, what makes it so great? Um, there's a few things that I think the, the most important from like the business standpoint is that um, it has a bit of predictability uh, as far as it gives you all the necessary tools to create a robust research and media plan. So it's got a lot of tools to assist you with that. You can go in and look at um, specific audiences. You can do an audience insight, uh, use the audience insight tool to create some framework around who you want to target, where those people live, what are they interested in, where their jobs are, what their affinities are to other brands that you're or other things that you're, you know, trying to promote to them. And so uh, forecasting and ability to get a good sense of how how big of a size of an audience I'm talking about is very important for for businesses and for marketers. Um, the second part, which is great uh, and what differentiates uh, Facebook as a social platform, they were probably one of the first to figure out how to optimize the serving of ads to different marketing objectives. Because not every brand, as you remember the funnel, when you're in different funnel stages, the brand might be pursuing different marketing objectives. When they want to get people exposed to the, um, the, the broadest amount of people exposed to their uh, brand messaging like a high level messaging such as like you know 
uh, Apple is cool, just like general brand messages. Like Apple is for cool, it stands for coolness. It's got like, you know, the modern products, it's got like sleek products. So this is a upper funnel messaging. And so they can go to Facebook and say, well, I'm willing to pay X amount of dollars just to get my ads exposed to the right people. So they're looking for, um, they're looking for the highest reach or they're looking for uh, the lowest cost per impression, which is a metric, that, the cost metric that you use to buy, um, you know, impressions like serving the ad on the platform. And so in that stage of the funnel, which is awareness, you, you can define that objective on Facebook and say, I want to reach the right people that are going to pay attention to my message. But if you are trying to convert someone around the holiday season to buy something, like say you're shopping for a gift to your daughter, your friend, uh, this is the right product to buy because this is the price, this is the great features, this is the value props of the product, then the advertiser who's showing you that ad must have selected a website conversion objective. They're trying to convert you. They're not trying to you know, uh, make you feel a certain way about their brand. They're not trying to tell you the story. They're not trying to show a brand ambassador, you know, like for like, let's say Nike, they're not trying to show you LeBron James doing like, you know, high flying moves and stuff like that. They actually want to get the right product in front of you with the right price and, you know, give you the right incentive. Maybe it's an offer code or maybe it's under discount or something else. So, on Facebook, you can select different marketing objectives, and I'll show you what those are, what those, the, the, how those objectives are available and what the difference between them. But this is a very important one. Um, the third one is measurement, which is a very, you know, another huge topic to address in digital and marketing in general is like understanding the incrementality. The incrementality meaning that if you were to show a ad to a, one person um, what is the likelihood of them buying because of the ad? How do you measure it? Well, you do a scientific, you do a randomized scientific test. Um, you measure the response from people who were exposed to the ads versus people who were not exposed to the ads. So you can do that on Facebook. Facebook has uh, great measurement tools. Not only that they measure the actual impact of an ad being served to a person, they measure clicks, they measure impressions, they measure website visits, they measure how many people from clicking the ad added a product to a cart, or how many people who clicked on the ad added a product to a cart also bought it, and what is the value of the product they purchased you know, from that ad. You can see those uh, real-time data, but then also you can run lift studies to understand the, imp the power of the tool, the power of running ads versus not running ads, and that's very valuable. Um, and then finally, um, there's what 2.2 billion users uh, on Facebook right now, meaning that if you have a product that um, is built for scale, it's scalable. It's a subscription service, for example. It's highly scalable. Uh, it can, you know, go, go across territories and across countries and continents. Then Facebook is the right tool for you to, to scale the, you know, efforts around the around the world because you can target uh, with your ads. You can target people anywhere in the world, as long as they have access to the internet and they have access to the Facebook app, you can find those type of segments and types of people living in any other country or multiple countries. Therefore, there's a, um, a huge potential with scalability. There's a huge potential with making your ads look, um, you know, localized and in the local, served in a local language. Um, therefore, you know, um, transferring the wins from one market to the other uh, could be down like that in the snap of a finger. Uh, by the way, I want to pause because I don't see everyone. I don't see the video. Uh, I want to ask Amelia, are there any questions? Should I, are people following along? Is the speed okay? I think that we're all good for now, Dennis. Thank you. Um, yeah, no okay. questions yet. Okay, awesome. And also, if you can check me on time as well, how am I running fast, slow? Are we tracking along well? <laughs> Um, you're at 12.22, so um, I think it should be okay. Okay, we're halfway through, so perfect. Yeah. Okay, so um, switching gears to the nitty-gritty part. So now let's imagine um, you're sold on Facebook, um, you have a friend of yours, or even you have a great idea of how to, you want to launch a product, you want to now go and create the ads. Because at this point, I don't think you have the money to go in and pay to the agency or hire anyone. So the best way to do is like 
figure it out yourself, give it a shot. So what do you do? You're going to go into the Facebook Ads Manager. And like inside the Facebook Ads Manager, when people first visit the platform, they might be feeling like, oh my God, I'm closing it. It's too complicated. Uh, I don't know how to figure it out. But essentially what it uh, looks like is there's an ad account. Um, inside that ad account, there's a way to create the first layer, which is campaign level. Then under campaign level, there's ad sets. Ad sets are basically where you define audiences, you define where your ads are gonna run, you define how you're gonna pay for the, for the ads that you're gonna run. Um, and then on the last layer, which is like pillar number three, is ads, where you actually define your creative. What are you gonna show? Uh, what format it is, video, carousel, static visuals, dynamic ads, different types of ad formats. This is where you define them. Um, and so here's a very basic um, hierarchy of things. What you need to know is the ad account contains a lot of the admin features. The admin features such as Facebook Pixel. The Facebook Pixel is what allows you to track those conversions that happen beyond people's clicking on the ads. If people leave the Facebook ecosystem and they go to an app, a mobile app, or they go to a website, they need to be tracked. The, the further actions are need to be tracked. What do they do on the website? Do they click on any buttons? Do they visit certain pages? Do they add a product to a cart? Do they add a, a credit card as a payment method? Do they make a, a final purchase on the website? So uh, Facebook Pixel allows to track all of these events and then tie them back to your Facebook ads. So inside your Facebook ads manager, you'll be able to see and optimize your ad performance to get you more of the actions you need. Uh, the ad account also stores your payment method. It stores the library of your videos and images. And ad account also is linked to the Facebook and Instagram pages of the business that it, on behalf of which you're showing the ads. Okay, so for very, like very simple sort of hierarchy, campaigns, ad sets, and ads. Um, pillars of successful campaign setup. There's a lot more, obviously, there's a lot more going, going on with, um, you know, buying and optimizing ads, setting up ads on Facebook, how to do it strategically, how to do it, you know, in the best way versus, you know, like not so good way. But I wanted to like give you my view of what I feel like are four core pillars that also have multiple legs underneath them. But like, I just want to focus on the four core pillars of a successful campaign setup. So first and foremost is like asking yourself, like, what is my objective? What am I trying to achieve? Which is kind of tied to conversion optimization. So it's you know, what is my desired outcome that I want to tell Facebook to give me more of and what am I paying for, right? So um, you can define um, your campaign objectives, as I mentioned before, all tying to awareness, consideration, and conversion. And Facebook actually set it up that way. So they have objectives that support uh, awareness stage, so objectives that support consideration stage, and objectives that support conversion stage. So first and foremost, you need to maybe take a piece of paper and say, well, I'm brand new. I'm just starting. My goal is to get as many people interested in my product, right? Um, or if you're like, enough people already know about my product, I want to start getting them, you know, moving a along the funnel, starting to consider my product. What are my best objectives that I want to tell Facebook to do? And some of the examples of the consideration objectives could be, well, I want to run more traffic to my website because my website, you know, might be a good representation of, you know, it does the, a good job of selling the value of a product. It does a good job of connecting to the consumers that I want. So I want to optimize my ads to drive more traffic to the website. The other one could be video views. Well, let's say you created a, a good video that basically explains the benefits of using the product. It shows the you know, a product in demo, it shows the different demographics of people that are using your product. And then you say, well, if more people watch this video uh, to its completion, then I think they will be, well, they will start considering my product more. So you can optimize toward a video view objective that is under consideration. 
And if you're in a conversion stage, you say, well, I've already built enough awareness and I already know a lot of people went to my website, they already browsed around. A lot of them have viewed my video. They already know what I'm about. I wanna get them to buy. So now you can go and set up your ads, specific creatives that are speaking toward those customers that are ready to buy and you just need to optimize and find the people that are ready to buy. So conversion optimization is the first thing that kind of links to the objectives that you want to have. The second one is targeting, right? We're moving from campaign level. On a campaign level, you define objectives. We're moving toward the ad set level where you define your targeting pillars. There's lots of ways. Uh, you can define by demo, by geo. You can define by different interests. You can define people by custom audiences, which is, uh, either a list of your existing customers you can upload to Facebook and match it with a pool of users that are available on Facebook. You can actually find the right people that you actually want and show the ad specifically to them. And then you can also create what's so called lookalike audiences. It's a it's an audience that looks similar to a starting custom audience. So if you have a group of visitors to your website, you can use that segment as a custom audience and create a lookalike audience. So is going to be an expanded, uh, it's almost like a, you know, um, a group of people on steroids. So you put a small one and then you say, well, supersize that list, you know, turn it into a 1% match or 2% match inside my country. So an audience size of, let's say, 10,000 people who visited your website, you can easily create a million size list off of, the, off of that 10,000 uh, user list by using a lookalike uh, feature. Um, that's your targeting pillars. That's where you're gonna do most of the work figuring out who to show your ads to, who are the best people, what age groups they're in, what education level they have, what is the family composition, what is the income that they should have in order to buy my product, what they should be interested in, or what kind of you know custom audience that should be targeting. Then you're going into the creative side, which is the ads level. And that's where most of the brands spending most of their time figuring out what to show for the mobile first world. Um, so what is the my mobile first creative is going to look like on social? Because showing a TV ad that is horizontal, that is long, that has a message, you know, uh, lo back loaded versus front loaded, where it kind of tells you what brand it is at the very end versus at the very first frame. That is the challenge that most of the performance advertisers are having today. And that's where, you know, a lot of the social influencers are winning because they're, you know, creating brand experience or communication experiences with the right creative that is appealing to the younger group that is faster, you know, catchier. Um, you know, it's more, uh, it's more, you know, also more true to the game, kind of like a true game thing, uh, which is being, in you know, not disrupting the experiences that people have on social, uh, because the reason why they come there is probably not to discover the ads. It's not to buy the products for the most part, but it's just uh, to connect with people, um, share the experiences, have conversations, um, you know, find out something new, entertain themselves. And so figuring out how your creatives um, fit into the conversations without disrupting them and actually excite people to take the next step uh, or, you know, to buy your product, that is the biggest challenge. So the biggest challenge I think today is in the creative part. Um, but finally is the measurement where even more advertisers are doing it wrong. They're not measuring their efforts properly. A lot of them not putting the pixel on the website, meaning they don't know anything that's happening be beyond the click. A lot of them are um, not measuring the... Um, uh, the incrementality factor, which is like they don't even understand how Facebook is contributing to additional sales or is it even driving additional sales? What would happen if you turn off all of your social ads? What would happen to your sales? What would happen to your subscriptions? What would happen to your, you know, uh, reach outs for any of the businesses that are like, you know, just generating the leads? Uh, for example, like accounting firms or, you know, financial firms or, you know, people who are setting up like financial, like, you know, accounts and stuff like that. So what would happen if paid social is no, it's not there versus what happens when they do activate those ads? What is the incrementality level? And so the measurement part is also the big compartment. It's a big opportunity for, you know, um, new 
strategically minded people to kind of get their you know teeth in because it's a very important aspect and for the creative people uh, I would say the creative world on social is also very challenging very new it's always changing so if you're thinking of you know entering the digital space I would you know highly recommend you kind of tap into one or the other is like the creative part and the measure or the measurement part because with the measurement part comes like all the strategic thinking and then with the creative part comes all of the targeting pillars in the demographical insights and the behavior and psychology of, of, of humans. So it's um, it could be a very interesting and challenging career. Um, oh, OK, yeah. So this is what uh, this is what I was referring to um, on the slide. Basically, it shows what types of uh, advertising objectives you can choose. And this is the very first step that you have to go through on Facebook when you set up the ads. So awareness has brand awareness objective, reach objective, consideration supports traffic to the website. You can pay for engagement. You can pay for app installs. You can pay for video views. You can do um, campaigns that are focused on lead, uh, lead generation, which is collecting uh, personal uh, data of people who are, might be you know, interested in your services. And you can also drive uh, engagement through messages. So it's a uh, Facebook Messenger. Um, this is where the Facebook Messenger platform plays the key role. And in the conversion, you you can do um, straight up conversions, which is optimizing for any events that are tracked by uh, via Facebook Pixel. You can do catalog sales if you set up a catalog for your shop, and then you can promote multiple products from the catalog, doing it dynamically. And then there's also uh, a store traffic objective for those offline businesses that are want to advertise um, digitally. This is what uh, the preview of the ad set experience. So on the ad set level, when we select and customize um, who we want to target, um, where the clients going to, where a potential client is going to look, uh, going to live, what they're going to look like as far as the demographic goes, what's their age, gender, language, and then there's additional detail targeting um, pillars that we can activate, uh, and we can stack them on top. We can do an and combination or an or combination. And from those, there's a list of demographics. There's a, a long list of 100 plus interests, and there's a few behavioral targeting um, features that you can enable. And the big part, again, uh, just to highlight how important it is, uh, everything kind of should be driven by videos um, in today's world. So regardless of the type of objective you pursue, regardless of the type of audience you're selecting, when you get to the ad creation stage uh, on Facebook, you should be thinking uh, two things, mobile first creative and video first creative. So um, those are the two main things to keep in mind um, as, as those two play out differently. Um, so mobile first creative, meaning you're creating for vertical world first. Um, and then uh, video assets is like you're creating video animations versus static assets. I'll pause just to explain what I'm going to show in the, in the slide. So um, this is like a, a highlight reel of the type of video assets that um, our creative department at Abacus has produced uh, with love for mobile first world. So uh, it's about a minute long. Let's just watch it. All right. 
love that video. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, uh, most of the assets that you've seen there um, were uh, made from Mobile First World. Um, a lot of the executions you saw there um, had different targeting pillars in mind. So when you saw uh, an ad that kind of looks similar, but it was kind of you know shaped and you know made for different audience segments, um, like for example, the aftershocks ad at the end. Um, is a product that we're working with and we've created a design system for them. Uh, we, our team flew to Miami to do a full production suit for them. Um, they thought of a different angles of sports and different sort of personas that we want to, you know, find and reach on, on, on Facebook and Instagram. And for that, we created a full library of assets going from awareness to consideration to conversion specifically for those personas for different sports types for different genders for different sort of you know lifestyles uh for different age groups and for you know different like um ethnicities as well so um so that's kind of the thinking we apply to the creative and then um us the media team uh which i'm part of we're taking these um creative assets and then we kind of layering them on top of the media buy strategy and then we're running these these ads and optimizing them um i think this deck will be shared with all of you but um as a, the next step i i highly suggest that you um go and um look at the facebookblueprint.com um resource it's um where you find a lot of the e-learning modules and courses in order to complete the uh, blueprint certification but even if you're not planning to complete the blueprint certification if you just want to uh, get exposure and understanding of how a lot of the elements on facebook work um, it's a great resource this is where i would definitely recommend anyone studying and uh, a blueprint certification because it's a valid one it's a very tough one to get it's a paid exam, it's a proctor exam, um, and it's constantly being updated with new, like all of the new things that are happening on Facebook and a platform. Um, we, when we hire even junior position people or senior position people, we always indicate that we prefer candidates that would have passed uh, a Facebook blueprint certification or who have completed the courses but haven't passed the exam yet. Um, because it's just kind of, uh, you know, a proof that you at least fun fundamentally understand what Facebook um, stands for and how, um, how you can do marketing on Facebook. What are the key fundamental things that work there versus things that don't work? And so if you are going to be entering the digital marketing space, I highly recommend you uh, pay attention to Facebook Blueprint. Maybe get certified before you even start looking for a job because it will definitely uh, make you stand out from the candidates. Um, the fourth piece that I was talking about um, is uh, measurement. And so um, there's three different outcomes that Facebook helps you measure. There's an audience outcome, there's a brand outcome, and there's a sales outcome. Um, the audience outcomes are all the, um, you know, ways to measure how well you reach, how far, how well, and how accurately you're reaching the audiences you want to reach. Um, there's different sort of, um, you know, measurement uh, key metrics that our Facebook is using to demonstrate to you how well you're doing, how well your ads are doing. So you can look at the reach, you can look at the frequency, you can run multiple um, experiments that are called split tests to define uh, which of the audiences works best for you. Um, on the brand outcome level, it's um, everything to do with how well your brand is resonating with the audience you, you, you're reaching, uh, how big of the ad recall lift you generated. So how many people after seeing your ads, you know, after passing two or three days, how many of them can recall seeing your ads, seeing your brand, uh, recalling the features of uh, the product you were showing? Um, because all of this kind of compiles into them, you know, being aware, starting considering, and then becoming uh, a client. And then obviously sales outcomes is, uh, all types of conversions that we measure. Uh, I mentioned conversion lift study before. Um, the Facebook attribution tool is a different, a whole different beast uh, of being able to say within your marketing mix channel, which might include different channels, different platforms, Google, blogs, video, YouTube, search, uh, email marketing, how well is Facebook uh, able to take the credit for 
uh, the sales outcomes or conversion outcomes that you are you know, paying uh, for and optimizing for. So Facebook attribution tool allows you to see uh, on a high level picture where this platform, this channel uh, really stacks against other channels and how efficient it is as far as driving the, the sales or conversions or leads. A big area of opportunity as well for those, uh, you know, pursuing digital space um, because this is a, one of those unresolved questions that just keeps lingering in everyone's like CMO level minds because they try to understand should they put more money into TV or should they put more money into social? Should they put more money in search or should they put more money in, in YouTube? Does this channel versus this one work? So Facebook attribution uh, along with conversion lift studies um, does help um, answer those questions. Uh, yeah, measurement solutions as well. Uh, there's an e-course uh, on a Facebook blueprint um, site which you can you know use as a separate like learning path uh, and hopefully get too excited because there's a lot to you know to be excited about there there's a lot of opportunities that you know start to arise in the industry that are related to measurement so you can find that uh, on blueprint as well um, something uh, to note as well that i've uh, mentioned uh, previously is the power of experiments and split testing uh, and one, it's one of the other reasons why you use Facebook and why advertising on, on Facebook is its uh, ability to give you scientifically proven results uh, around what aspect of your, you know, advertising setup or your campaign setup, ad set setup or ads level setup is working and is driving results versus the other element. So if you're if you have a lot of different audiences you want to test and you want to understand which one actually will drive the result versus the other? You can run split tests, um, which you know divides your audience into random and non-overlapping groups of people who are showing ad sets that are identical in every way except for the testing variable. So if you if you love wearing uh, a lab coat, you know, and wear, love wearing this you know examiner hat um, on an everyday basis, I think you love <laughs> you love playing around with the split testing tool. So any campaign you set up. Um, on Facebook can be set up as a regular campaign or it can be set up as a split test campaign in which the only difference is like how the uh, ad sets are going to be treated uh, for scientific measurement. Um, DNA was just, yeah. just, to, just to jump in, it is 12, it's just a little past 12.45, so if you can maybe just hit the highlights in the last part so we have enough yep. time for the workshop, that would be amazing. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, I do have like three success stories that I was going to chat with you about. But um, since this is going to be all shared with you in a deck, um, I think these are just not, nothing more than just like, you know, few, you know, a uh, few comments on like how and what we did for these clients. But uh, I don't want to like spend the time on that. I'd rather just, um, you know, take a few questions uh, if people have any questions because everything else here is just self-explanatory. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dennis. Um, that was that was great. Uh, I think we've really set the stage well to do a deep dive into, into paid social. Um, in terms of questions, I don't see any questions being dropped into the chat uh, window, but um, I'm very tempted to ask you, so I will. Um, um, we've all been hearing about uh, you know, Facebook in the news uh, quite a bit uh, in, in the last few months, uh, maybe a year or so. Have you been seeing any changes, any technical changes being made to the platform? Um, I'm, I'm not sure if you have a view into those algorithms uh, which which try and uh, really curtail uh, the spread of, um, you know, uh, campaigns which are not like genuine or which are misleading. Yeah, um, yeah, it's a good question. Um, I just had a call with our Facebook rep yesterday um, talking about uh, that and the impact that they're, they're, they're having. Um, it's, it's mainly coming down to, I think what Facebook has done really well and, and, and continues to, to do really well is introducing new features and tools um, to help both advertisers and, and, and people on the platform to um, have more control over privacy, over 
uh, what information they're receiving, and then also, you know, being able to customize their journeys uh, on a platform the way they want. Um, so notable changes that are coming down is uh, the enforcement of um, consumer, I think it was a California Consumer um, California Cons Consumer Privacy Act or something like that, CCPA, yeah, California Consumer <laughs> Privacy Act. Mm -hmm. So that is, uh, that is coming down um, soon in October is going to be a widespread application for um, all of the advertisers that are promoting their businesses in California state. Basically what it does is uh, Facebook had to apply, had to, um, Facebook had to comply with the regulation uh, and inform all of the advertisers that there is going to be a certain level of um, data protection that's going to need to be uh, implemented uh, for uh, customers that have been served ads on, on California. Um, and with that, I think Facebook has been doing a pretty stellar job of just informing first uh, advertisers of the impact. Um, B is giving them the tools to address those things. Uh, and there's, there's another big one that is coming down the line which is uh, going to be called conversion API, which is a whole new way to, uh, it's going to be a whole new way to measure the uh, results of Facebook ads on websites uh, and um, on, on, on browsers, because now it relies on the technology that drops a cookie on your, on your browser when the page loads and then it passes down the information to Facebook. Well, in 2022, I think the impact is going to be that 80% one of the largest browsers, I think, is going to be Chrome. That's not going to allow up to 80% of that data to be passed back to Facebook. So they have to be addressing it fast um, and bold. And so they are. Um, and it's just it's just a matter of, you know, a matter of, you know, them complying to a lot of the rules. But then on the advertiser level, I think um, there's no immediate impact. Um, there's no, like, a really immediate impact on on what's what's going on is just again it's just uh, building awareness of how you know consumers and customers now have a bit more power as far as like what information they share and just be prepared for that right right thank you thank you dennis um there is one question i think we will just take one question and then we'll move on to the workshop so charles is asking uh, when starting out on cold audiences, do you always go for conversions or do you use other objectives like traffic, engagement, and so on? So, yeah. for example, if you're selling a product, will you always go for conversions? Is it possible to get better results starting from another objective other than conversions? Yeah, it's a very good question um, because um, yeah, it's it's a it's one of those most uh, important fundamental questions uh, because a lot of the YouTube, uh, Facebook gurus and Instagram gurus, when they pitch you the the magic way of how they set up their ads and on Facebook, they always say, well, if you want to sell your product, go and start your ads called optimizing toward a purchase event, which is like you select that purchase pixel uh, that you know triggers when somebody buys it and you just tell Facebook, I want purchases right off the gate. What I've noticed and what I've seen uh, you, you know, like Facebook needs to learn. It's a, it's a, it's an AI technology. So you need to feed enough data. And like one of those, you know, golden rules that they have is in order for Facebook to exit the learning stage and give you better results at a lower cost, is it needs to collect at least 50 critical conversions in one ad set in seven days. So if you think about it, if you're just starting and you say like, I want a purchaser. Facebook knows what type of purchasers that exist in its universe, but it just doesn't know what, what the purchasers that are going to be fit for your brand, for your product. I, I would not advise starting on, especially if it's a brand new campaign, it's a new brand, new product. You have to compile the audiences first. You need to warm up the pixel. I call it like warm up the pixel. So you need to feed the data that is like shallow data first, then go into consideration data, which is your add to cart events, people, you know, going to the category pages of like those products or e-visiting product pages in general. And then only after that, you optimize to purchases. Once you've gathered enough, you know, visits to the site, views of the videos, you can retarget them. You built enough pipeline of ads to carts. Now you can start retargeting, optimizing to purchase. Going off of just, you know, setting up your very first campaign saying I want purchases, 
I think you're going to burn through a lot of cash before you see a single one. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you for answering that one. Uh, so in the interest of time, I think we should uh, you know, move along to the workshop section. We just have about an hour and five minutes um, to kind of conquer, uh, conquer that. So it's uh, over to you and Amelia. Um, yeah, if everyone, yeah, if everyone who is staying for that is ready, and Amelia, maybe you just signal to me if people are ready. Maybe ask people in a comment to do like a plus, like we need some engagement, guys. Like it, this is how it works in this digital world now. Like people need to stay engaged. Uh, so if you can drop in the comments some kind of a thumb up or a plus yeah. or one or whatever it is, just yeah. indicating that you're ready to go, then we'll start. Okay, we're getting a few people coming in saying that they're ready. So I think that we should be good to go. Okay, yeah. excellent. All right, guys. So part two, your first Facebook ads campaign. Uh, this deck, I'll run it through it super fast. I just want to get you prepared for what's coming, what steps we're going to take, and then we're going to jump into the specific uh, portals, uh, which is Canva, um, creating uh, your first business manager account, creating a Facebook ads account, creating some of the assets that we're going to use um, on, on, on Facebook in Canva, and then dropping them into Facebook and creating the campaign. So I just want to get the, the stage set. This is what you should have prepared coming into um, this part of the workshop. So you should have your Facebook business page set up uh, for whatever wellness business it is. Like it doesn't even matter, it just, just for the demo purposes. You need to have your Canva account created so you can access it today right away. And you need to have your credit card on hand for ad account creation only. I'll indicate it. There is no risk of putting your credit card on Facebook and I will gladly show you how to remove it after. You will not be charged a, a cent or a dime. Uh, it's just that we need to have a payment method associated with it ad account so you can go in and actually submit the campaign that we're going to build to Facebook. And then after that, we, I'm going to show you how to deactivate everything so nothing will be spent. So those three things, we need to have everyone ready. What we'll create today, a business manager, Facebook ads account, depending on time, two to three uh, static assets, two video assets for initial ad campaign. And depending on the time, we'll definitely gonna go and create at least one campaign. But my goal is to show you how to create two different campaigns for two different objectives that we just talked about in the previous part of the, the seminar um, for in two, in, in two different ways. There's two different ways to create campaigns. I wanna show you both the long, the guided creation way and then the quick creation way. So we're going to go on a business manager. We're going to create a Facebook ad account. We're going to create a few static assets in Canva. So I'm going to give you a, this is a demo of what I sort of pre-populated for my business idea, which is obviously a gym. I'm a big uh, fitness fan. So mine is a, a remote or distant workouts over Zoom, uh, group workouts over Zoom. And I'm going to show you how to create animated assets right in Canva. So these assets, the difference between these ones they're going to be treated as videos on Facebook and not as statics. And as I said in a previous part of our seminar, this is a pretty important to have start with videos first. Um, you can skip that. We're not going to get to all types of animation practices, but I'll share the deck and so you'll be able to see those. Uh, campaign creation, we're going to jump into the guided one. So we're going to start with the brand awareness and maybe we can create a consideration stage as well, the traffic, uh, traffic type campaign. Reminder, everyone should be familiar with this at this point. Should be familiar with this at this point. And in the ad creation level, I'll show you how to create dynamic creative optimization, how to enable dynamic creative optimization. And then when we get to that, I'll uh, touch on what it does and what's different about it and why I haven't even talked about it in the first part. All right. So I'm exiting this deck. Everybody, please, if you could. First of all, everyone can see my screen. Thumbs up, Amelia. Some, yes, some I think we should be good. <laughs> if okay. anyone can't, put a thumbs down. But otherwise, I think we should yeah. be good. Awesome. Can everyone please go to, uh, you should be logged into Facebook, just as, as 
personal Facebook, your personal Facebook, you should be logged in. So this is an indication you're logged in. And we need to go to business.facebook.com slash front slash or whatever it's called slash <laughs> overview. Okay. This is the first starting point for us to create that business manager account. And if everyone's there, just once you've done that, maybe put like a, again, a plus X, whatever symbol in the chat. And then I may like can sort of transfer it to me saying like everyone's done that step. Everyone's there. Okay. Business.facebook.com slash overview. Okay. We're going to click okay. create account. You're going to name your business and account name. So this is a business manager account. You can call it your name. I'm going to call it business Dennis Malnick BM account. Okay. Your name is, stays there. Your business email. Okay. We're going to need you to put your personal email that you can go in and open in a different tab so that you can validate the creation of that account. So for mine, I'm going to put my email and I'm going to show you. So three fields, the name of the business manager account, your name should populate here because you're logged in and your business email. We don't have any like actual business that we're setting up. So let's just use your personal email. Okay. Business details. Let's just quickly run through it. You're going to select and type in Canada street address. You can put anything you want. It doesn't even matter. Oh, <sighs> see. Now why it's froze. Not good. Um, Getting real timing issues on there. No, I, I think they shouldn't. It's just I think that this window that when it populates, it kind of messes with the 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 screen sharing. Um, can I have just everyone go through this? Use promote its own goods and service and click submit. Um, and just let let me know in the chat when this is done. I'm going to take a look at the chat. Now we have one, two, three, three. Yeah, okay. an, an account. All good, all good, all good. Awesome. Okay. Um, after this, we're going to go and type business.facebook.com. Because you have created um, a business manager account, you should now be able to see it here. I have m I have been added to multiple business manager accounts. That's why I couldn't create a net new because I've already have one under my name. But because it's your first one, you should be able to see it here. Let me know if you're not able to see anything here by going just to business.facebook.com. Okay, we're not, not looking like there's any issues with that, so I think we can keep going. Keep going, okay. So if you do see a, a business um, account that you just created, it should have its own name, whatever you just named it. If you named it your your name, it should like be your name here. I'm going to go and use mine that I created for an e-com little business that I was running. So we're going to click on it. It's going to load business manager home page. Take a bit of time. All right. So once we're here, we're going to toggle this little wheel. It's called business settings. So we're going to go to business settings from here. Okay. Yeah, let us know in chat if you're having trouble or I'm going too fast. So you should be able to see this kind of screen. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add your Facebook page for the business that you have created uh, prior to the workshop. OK, 
Okay. I have, um, what you're going to do is you're going to click add, add a page. And you can, if you remember the name of the page you created, you can just type the name. I remember I was creating this one, right? So this is my page for today's demo. This is the business, the e-com business that I set up on Facebook as a Facebook page. Okay. Since I already edited it, it's already there, but what you have to do is just add the page. Okay. Let me know if you're having trouble with this step. But you should be able to add the page and it should show up here. All right. So this is step one. We adding, we're adding the Facebook page you created. We're adding it to a business manager account. Okay. And if there is a step along the way that it asks you for different um, access, just click on and choose manage page. I think it was it would be one of the steps when you were saying add page. Just say you you want to manage your page. You want to get the max amount of um, access. You want to be an admin and you save it. Okay. Next step so is creating. Really quickly, we have a question. So Kristen, you're asking if we add our own page. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yes, you add your own page. The 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 page which you should have created um, prior to joining today's webinar is one of those uh, requirements. You, you add your own page. Yeah. Yeah. So once you've done that, we're going to add accounts. So we need to link our ad accounts. If you don't Sorry, have Dan. it, yeah. We just have another comment. Um, so someone, Daniel was able to add his own page, but it's pending access request. Is that typical? Um, shouldn't be because it's your page. Is anyone you could, else having that issue? Well, you could what, what what you could do is uh, open a different tab, open a different tab, type in Facebook.com. It'll take you to just your your regular feed in the notifications. I'll show you mine. So if you go to Facebook, in the notifications. Sorry, he's saying that there's other admins on the page. So potentially, if he's sharing this business page with someone else, they might also need to um, allow him access. Is that would yeah, that be correct? That, um, yeah, that's why I'm saying for the for the demo for the day demo, everyone needed to create their own page right? because yeah. if if you're getting into adding a page that you don't manage. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So he's so, yeah he's saying that. that otherwise, that yeah. Sense. Like if yeah. they're admins, they need to grant permission to you. Permission. Okay. But if you create your own page and you just selected yourself as an admin, you wouldn't have any. You wouldn't need to go and in, into notifications and you know uh, approve the request. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Add I accounts. Yeah. Find right underneath the pages add accounts. I am assuming you have no ad accounts here, so we're going to create net new ad account. So I'm going to click on add, add an ad account. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. You're going to create a new ad account. My bad. Create a new ad account. So call it test account three time zone currency. That's typically important depending on where your ad account is going to be advertising and how it's going to be charged. The main thing is the payment method. So if you want, if you're selling something in the States, if you're prim primary going to be billed and in, billed in US dollars, you might want to create an ad account that's going to charge currency is going to be USD. But for demo purposes, let's keep Canadian dollars. We're going to go next. It says it's going to be used for your business, which is should have the name of the business manager we created today. When you hit create, I I cannot proceed to the next stage because I have a um, number of accounts that already have here is the max. Maybe I just deactivate a few. But if you go to the next stage, I think it will just create just fine. Like it will just show up here. Yeah, I'll see if I can run through this. 
again. I think, yeah, you, you, you have a certain limit on ad accounts in, of, for which you can create. Um, let me know, guys, if um, you were able just to create the ad account just fine and I don't have to show um, that step again. Well, I'll try again. Yeah, nothing, nothing's coming up, so I'm assuming okay. that everyone is doing okay. <laughs> you wish the number. Yeah, so it's it's actually yeah, it's actually it's actually I think after you hit the next or create, it will ask for the same level of permissions, just like on a page. So it would ask you what kind of level of access you want to have for that ad account, similar to what you've been asked to pages. Just select manage ad account. It'll give you the the ultimate power for your ad account. And once it's created, once we're here, the next thing we need to do in order to set up the campaigns later is we need to go to view payment methods. Okay, so once again, I was here. That ad account, for example, is the one you created. You'll click on it under like next to Open Ads Manager, view payment methods. Okay, it'll take us right to this page. And that's where I'll ask all of you just to take you know, two minutes just to add a payment method just so that we could create campaigns, but we wouldn't activate any of the campaigns. And then in the future, you can come to this page. You can just keep it open. After the workshop is done, you can just deactivate the payment method. You can just take out your credit card completely. You won't be charged a dime. <laughs> okay. So if you click add payment method from this page, and then you use this, to fill out the credit card. Again, nobody's going to see it as you're doing it on your own computer. It's all encrypted. Uh, it's stored securely. And then once you just add it, let me know in the chat so we can proceed. I'll give you a few minutes. And so in the meantime, if everyone is super speedy at that, if anyone wants to share what business pages that they've come up with um, for this workshop, I yeah. think we'd all be interested to see um, what some ideas came up. Um, so if you have an extra second to share that, mm -hmm. then we can all see. Awesome. So Daniel, Daniel said the original page that he was going to use was Pick Easy Inc., um, which is a UTSC startup um, that just launched their app. So congratulations, Daniel. That sounds super nice. cool. That's cool. I mean, um, you can still go through the demo um, and then maybe create a separate page uh, today. Um, but like the steps of renting access, the admin access, uh, to the page is going to be the same. You can just, yeah, create a test page just to go through the demo exactly. Yeah. Awesome. All right, guys, let's um, another half a minute or so. Just um, if everyone can just say, how are you doing on adding the payment method? Um, we need to move along. I'm going to see if no one's saying anything in the chat. We should be good. Yeah, someone's saying done. Done? Okay, yeah. All good. Yeah, we should be good to move on. Okay, excellent. So next step is let's open, let's click on in the ad account, let's open it in ads manager. So navigate to the ad account you just created um, and click on this button, open an ads manager. It'll open a different tab. All right, so 
we'll create the framework for our campaigns. If you recall, um, we have campaigns, we have ad sets, and we have ads. In order to upload a full campaign, you need to have a campaign objective set up, ads with the targeting, the uh, you know with the targeting, the placements, and you need to have the actual creatives. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're first gonna from here, I think it will look empty on your screen because there are no, and it will say create ad here um, because it's a fresh new account, nothing has been created. Um, but this is the view of the actual ads manager dashboard that I basically work in every day and manage most of the ads every day. Um, in addition, the uh, shortcuts, there's a lot of different shortcuts to different um, folders and, and tools. Um, we're going to use the image and videos um, folder just to upload our uh, assets to so that we can we don't have to upload them inside the ads level. We can upload everything when we get to the ads tab and we're uploading the ad or we can upload them to the folder and then they'll just show up in here. OK, so we're going to use just that one. But there's a lot more of things they can use. As you can see, you can scroll down. And I was telling um, you how you can do the research. Um, so the audience insight is one area where you can do the research. Analytics is also a very powerful tool when you have already run some media and you want to examine different cohorts. You can examine different funnels. You can build different funnels to see how people are progressing through. You can see the time of the day when people are interacting with your ads. You can see conversion rate numbers. You can get um, analytics on the pixel, not just related to your ads, but to all traffic that comes to your website. Okay, so this is also a very good analytical tool that's like a native, um, basically a native tool inside Facebook. Attribution is what the tool I was talking to. You need to set it up separately. You need to link it to different platforms and channels, but um, ultimately is what I use, um, you know, weekly or monthly when we do reports. Um, the audience insights is what I use at the start only, um, but then most of the work on the audiences is happening inside the audience, um, inside the audience tab. I'll, I'll do a quick demo and preview later, but for now, let's switch gears and create our assets because this is what uh, might take a bit of time. All right, so when you go to canva.com, please log in with the account that you just created. And you should end up at this um, dashboard. Let me know in the chat when you're all there. So go to canva.com, uh, use the login information you've had, um, and just get to here. Awesome. I think people are hopping into Canva here pretty quick, so we should be good. Yeah. OK, okay yeah, excellent. Um, create a design. So click Create a Design. Um, and what I like to do is I like, because I know the dimensions that I want for the ads on Facebook, uh, it's 1080 by 1080. I usually just go here. If it's an, if it's a net new, I'll just go here. But if I have designs that I've built in the past on Canva, you can just duplicate them. Okay. But since I want to show you from the, your perspective, I will just go here. So we'll go create design, custom dimensions. We're going to type 1080 by 1080. These are your static one for one assets. Um, and the videos as well. So this is the this is the first size. Uh, this size is served in feed for in feed placements. Um, the other size is for stories. Not only in feed, it supports I think nine other placements uh, on Facebook, uh, but this, there's mainly the two. So there's this in feed and story placements. Okay. So you should have. And let's title it right away. Uh, static ads demo let's say one for one um okay all right so it's a blank canva so we're gonna do and just for simplicity purpose like for demonstration really purpose uh let's search for facebook ad template okay you're free to pick any template you want right now anything that like you know you like the style whatever it is I'm going to pick this one. You just click on it. It applies the template to this. Now, let's think about 
what business you've created. What would be the relevant imagery here? What would be the relevant colors? What would be the relevant caption? If you want to put caption, you don't have to. And this is a place for logo. Let's assume I'm leaving this as my logo. I'm going to assume this is my logo, okay? For just simplicity purposes, but we can have a logo here. We can have a logo here. You can have a bigger, you know, treatment to a logo, but for demonstration purposes, I'm going to assume this is my logo for my business, okay? So what I'm going to do next is like, since I'm creating, since I, as I said, I'm going to create ads for, um, you know, uh, home fitness company that's, I'm going to be running from home. I'm going to use Zoom. I'm going to connect to, you know, people that live everywhere in the world really who want to do partner workouts, single workouts, mainly bodyweight workouts. So I want to do some kind of a fitness photo and place here instead of the this lady listening to her um, music. So I'm going to go into photos, which is a big library of photos here. There's mainly um, there's a lot of uh, royalty free photos, but then there's a paid subscription on Canva as well that you can activate, which I used to have active, which is called Try Can uh, Canva Pro. That'll give you access to even more like millions of photos. But for simplicity purpose, I'm going to say uh, workout. I'm going to look for images that show a workout. I'll be like, OK, perfect. This is perfect. This is the guy doing mountain climbers on the floor. We can see he's indoors. And then I'm going to say um, over 100 plus uh, workouts. I'm going to make it smaller. I'm going to do some treatment to the text. A little bit bolder, bigger. I don't like the color of these lines. I'm going to do something in red. If you want to add additional elements, you could. Like if you want to add some elements such as lines, different shapes, like, I don't know, I'm going to add this shape. Okay. You can play around, uh, well, or we can just customize any of the template you just chose. Um, let's use the same color. Okay. All right. So this is my static ad number one. Okay. This shows a specific demographic. Like this is probably going to be targeted to males um, and I'm going to show this is my value prop over 100 plus workouts. OK, um, obviously, when we run ads, we also have a bit of copy that we can write at the top and we have headline that we can write at the bottom to make ad more impactful. But I'm happy with this as my as my ad number one. You can think of, you know, you can think of whatever message you want to put in here, but make it crisp, make it make it, you know, small. The rule uh, for static ads on Facebook is that no more than 20% of your space should be covered by text. So you can't have text like this. So this, if you have like a huge text portion, you know, taking more than 20% of your ad space, it's probably going to be either disapproved or going to have limited exposure. Like Facebook doesn't want to have banner ads just showing up in the feed. They want like, you know, captions to be capped at 20% of the, the ad. They want the visual to speak for itself, okay? So I'm happy with this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this. If you created yours, uh, first of all, yeah, in the, in the chat, drop how you, how you feel about your ad if you finished your first one. I'm gonna copy mine. So you copy it, so I don't have to do much more work. I'm going to say, well, how about how about this now? OK, so this is just basically a variation number two, which I'll run towards female audience. And I'll say easy to follow workout routines and since it has a little different colors i'll pick a different color for the lines i'll make them purple for example and i'll make 
again, this is just for demo. Um, it's not meant to to be the the greatest looking ad. I just show you that there's lots of tools and lots of ways to do it, and there's fast ways to do it. But here's main thing about what I'm doing now is just like I'm thinking of two different demos that I want to reach. And because I can show ads to different demos, I can specify that I want to show this ad to female audience and I want to specify that I want to show this ad to a male audience. You could create multiple variations of your assets. Okay, so I'm happy with these two. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to download both. I'm going to choose, you can choose pay, uh, JPEG or PNG. I'm going to choose JPEG. Uh, premium, which one was premium? This wasn't premium. Oh, okay. Logo wise, I'm going to have to, uh, da, 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 da. I'm going to have to put a placeholder instead of the actual image for the logo. Um, if you create your logo, it's going to be free, but if it's a logo that comes with some of the templates, you need to watch out for the watermark. So this is a placeholder, okay? So this is simply to say, um, this is where I would have my logo if I were to create the real ad, okay? That way I can download it for free without paying anything else, okay? So no, no paid assets, okay? So I'm gonna create those two. I'm gonna download them as statics. PNG or JPEGs will work. And all we need is just two types of ads. No, we don't want Canva Pro. If you work and if that's what you do for, you know, clients or you're creating a lot of stuff for your own business, I highly recommend Canva Pro. There's lots of great features and I've created lots of animations, lots of ads. Okay, the next step we're going to do, um, so follow along is, um, oh, we're not able to resize. We're not able to resize with a free one. I was going to show you how we can turn these into vertical assets, um, but we're probably going to have to drop that and just for look at animations. Um, if you have those two assets created, um, you should see the animate button. Click it and then apply to all pages. Okay, so you're going to apply the animation you're going to choose to both of these pages, to both static ads. And with the, the simple animations that come standard here, pan, I'm going to use pan, I like the pan, I like the, the sliding, you know, like motion part. Um, timing, I'm going to use two seconds. Pan. All right. So I just applied animation to these two static assets, and now I want to download those two, and they're going to be my video ads. All right. Let me know if you're following along or if any have any trouble. Um, but basically, you you're free to customize. Um, both the ads, the way you look, um, they should just look different. There should be two variations. In my, um, in my choice, I made variations about the demographics. You can make variations around, you know, value propositions. You can experiment with different colors. You can experiment with different templates. You can experiment with different shapes and forms. So um, those are the type of experiments you can actually run and validate on Facebook. But for simplicity purposes, obviously, uh, I just want to show you the, the minimum amount of assets and how they are all going to apply. All right, so we have two static ads downloaded, ready to go. We have um, two animated assets uh, downloaded, ready to go. Actually, why is it one? Sorry, I think it made both. Let me check. What did, I think we have to download them separately. Oh, yeah, they put both in one. Sorry. Actually, actually, that's OK. But I will download a separate one. Because it applied it to two pages, what I needed to do is instead apply animation and save as two separate files. OK, so I'm going to choose page one. 
and I'm going to click done. So we will only apply animation to this page and it will save download only one asset, which is my first visual first. First visual only without combining the two into a single video. OK. Sorry about that. I, I, I make that mistake all the time. Sometimes I have like five to six different ads. They all being animated and then I click download selecting all of them and it just gives me one video file instead of six different ones. Um, but so if you want to, yeah, if you want to do it for yours um, separately, so just download page one separate and then download page two with the animation applied separately as well. So it will be two separate files. So at the end we'll get two statics and two videos. How is everyone doing? I'm not seeing any issues come up in the chat, so I'm assuming that everyone is doing well, unless anyone wants to um, share any difficulties that they're having. Man, I'm impressed. UTC so student. <laughs> UTC student, I'm impressed, guys. Thank you. <laughs> so impressed. When, I, so when I run these for like seasoned marketers, like sometimes they struggle. They take too long. They ask so many questions. <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad we're done here. So we're just going to go back and jump to the ads manager. Uh, and I'm hoping you guys are done here, but just keep that page on. I'll show you how to remove the stuff um, after we're done. So let's just navigate back to the ads manager where we were. And I was telling you, once we create all of our assets, we can either drop them into uh, images and videos, um, which let's just open it as a separate tab. I'll show you how it's kind of organized and done there. It's fairly simple. It's just a library of all the elements you have that you want to apply to that ad account. Um, typically, when I have a lot of assets that a client has passed to us like there's like a folder of many different assets instead of you know figuring out which one i apply when i do the actual campaign uploads i just go first here upload all of them inside and it's fairly easy to do like as you can see um i'll add the videos first yeah go to downloads um now fine. I think the one thing that is not working for Facebook is it used to work well, selecting multiple videos and letting them all upload as separate line items. It's not long. It, oh, see this one doesn't work. Maybe it will work for you, but I have to do one by one basically. So you used to be able to select multiple and have each one, you know, do the downloading um, parallel, but now it's one at a time. Okay, so let's go through this quickly one at a time. First is videos. Okay. Download that one. Upload. Yeah, upload that one. All right, should be good here. And since the statics were in archive folder, I'll, uh, I'll unarchive first. I'll take these two. With images, it's easier. You just drag and drop them. Um, with videos, it's a bit more slower. So done. So I've uploaded. Two videos, two statics. They're all hosted here inside the images and videos. I can just close that one. I'm just going to jump in really quickly, Dennis. We have um, Caleb is asking where this page is. Oh, um, sure. So if you could just yep. remind us how you got to this Definitely. spot. <laughs> yeah. So we're in Ads Manager, starting in Ads Manager. There's these three lines beside the Ads Manager. You just click on it. It's called Shortcuts. If you don't see this image and video shortcut here, which you might not because I've used it, maybe it just goes into a shortcut after you use it, go and find it under 
Mm, I don't even know. Maybe, maybe, oh, here. If it's not showing up for you in the shortcuts, it will be under manage business. And then I just open it in separate tab. Let me know if it helps. Caleb says he's not seeing the three lines. Um, is, oh. is that possible? <laughs> not sure. What do you, maybe, yeah, maybe there is a possibility that the version, um, let's see. Maybe Could there's he search one. for the images and videos? Or uh, is that not? No, it will, it would need to be somewhere on the left hand side. It would need to be like some kind of a menu. Let's see if I, I'll, I just opted into a, like a newer version. Um, let me see if it show me. Oh, he sees it now. Sorry. Okay. He does see yeah. It. So yeah, the other thing is it might look like this, right? It might not look as three lines. It might look like the menu because the UI, they, they keep changing it. Um, yeah. I was in the old version. And then I just switched to the new one. So I, I think what I'll see now is more what you guys see. Yeah, should be somewhere in here. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. OK, excellent. So um, I hope everyone uh, uploaded their assets and we're ready to get to the uh, campaign creation stage. Um, as you can see in my account, I already have a whole bunch of campaigns that were created that I've run in the past on a campaign level it looks all about campaigns that sets inside is looking like this um, which another thing that I'll try to demonstrate to you now um, is the naming convention which is very critical if you want to stay organized and if you want to you know, save yourself time on reporting and analyzing and optim optimizing campaigns. You need to adhere to very strict or some kind of a formalized naming convention. Okay, not just mention that like all all of your ads should not be named image one, image two, image three. All right, so click on create. Um, if it put you into a quick creation. Start over. Let me know if everyone is in um, this view. Everyone sees uh, three boxes on the left, campaign, ad set, ad, and then it has this view where it starts with marketing objective. Let me know um, if your guys are on the same page. We have a couple people confirming that they are, so hopefully all right. Someone's saying they aren't, then. <laughs> okay. All sign. right. So we got ourselves um, a brand new business that we want to launch. Uh, and as I talked in the first part of a seminar, um, it might make sense to, first of all, get a bit of exposure and awareness. Um, for that, we have two different objectives we can use. So the reach objectives show your ad to the maximum number of people. And the brand awareness is increasing your brand awareness for your brand by reaching people who are more likely to be interested in it. With a brand awareness, you have an ad recall lift percentage that comes as a standard uh, metric that you're going to be able to see, examine, and report on, and obviously optimize towards. So I suggest we create our first bucket of campaigns with brand awareness in mind. Okay. Once you click on brand awareness, it puts you into uh, this um, setup field which is naming okay so as i said naming conventions are pretty important the way i do it is um your so your brand then type of campaign brand awareness objective you can even spell it out brand awareness objective next thing i do is we're gonna enable campaign budget optimization which is a feature that allows facebook um, to optimize your budget that you select, whether it's daily or lifetime budget, across multiple ad sets that are going to be hosted inside a campaign. So you don't define how much you want to spend per audience. You, you don't define how much you want to spend per different ad set. You just tell Facebook, use that budget inside my campaign and make decisions based on the performance inside the ad sets. I might put two ad sets, I might put three, four, five, whatever, but I want you to optimize inside so I don't have to control budgets inside. So I usually say CBO to indicate that it's a CBO type campaign. So all the features I'm enabling and like 
you know, creating, I try to communicate in the naming. So I'm going to set it as daily 25 and I also have a lifetime cap of let's say 100. So don't worry, you don't have to follow this now. You don't even have to call any, like you can just simply say test because you're just creating a test campaign. You're not going to activate anything. Um, so don't don't even worry about any of that. Um, we're gonna hit. So it's a daily. We're gonna optimize it on the lowest cost, which is my preferred method of bid strategy. Um, there's multiple bid strategies you can use. Um, beside the lowest cost, there is. Um, the, it's a, it's only the lowest cost for uh, some types of campaigns, but there's multiple ways to optimize your bids. If you choose consideration stage campaigns, you can optimize for um, lowest cost. You can optimize for landing page views. Uh, you can optimize, sorry, you can optimize for lowest cost, target cost, or bid cap. Um, this is a whole, new, you know, whole different like beast in itself. Like how you buy and optimize your you know, bids because this is how you enter into a dynamics auction dynamics where you place your ads into auction and then you start bidding process for like winning impressions and being served because you have to win impressions you know you have to buy impressions to serve to the right audience but for now leave it as low as cost so then from campaign you can you should see two check marks we selected um an objective the special category doesn't apply uh to our type of campaign um and we go into the audience so i'm going to create first ad set i'm going to say i want to reach so it's going to be Canada. I'm going to say I want to reach 25 to 45. And the first one, I'm going to reach female audience. Female only. I'm going to say they should be interested. Fitness, workout, gym. I'm going to do it on all placements. And I'm going to do a DCO type ad. If I can, mm, doesn't look like I can. So, sir, no DCO for this one for traffic. We're going to DCO. We're going to get to the audience side. So, if I want to, basically, I know in my head who I want to target. That's why I spelled it in a name. And now I just have to like enable it here, customize it, just using the the features here. So I want to do twenty five. To 45s, I want to select from all genders. I want to just select women. Um, okay, detailed targeting. This is where I select those interests that I defined. Jim, um, Glower, is there one? No, oh, Jim's. And then there's by each interest, you can see the, the type of size um, that goes along with it. So I'll do the gym shark. I'll do fitness. Physical fitness is the largest. I do women fitness. This is too small. Um, some of them you just have to eyeball. Like nothing with women fitness is large enough. So I can look at suggestions. Blue lemon, physical exercise. Okay. Sounds about right. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is my potential reach combined. When you select detailed targeting, you tell him Facebook, I want, if you select multiple in who match without exclusion and narrowing, you say, I want people who match Gymshark or Lululemon or physical fitness. If you want to narrow it, if you want to say, well, I want people who are also and combination, you're going to click on narrow. For now, I just want the broadest one because I'm creating an awareness. I said I want to do all placements, which is the recommended one. Uh, I'm going to optimize for ad recall lift. So I'm going to optimize my ads to give me the highest ad recall lift. Okay, I'm going to click next and I'm going to jump into ad section. So this is where we um, basically identify what creatives we're going to run. Okay. 
So for this one, let's put uh, video ad, brand awareness. Uh, let's do top funnel copy. Uh, and I usually indicate driving to, you know, um, landing page X. Well, X would be replaced with my actual. Uh, in the identity, um, you would select your own page that you created. So this is step one. So what Facebook page will show the ads from, like on behalf of which page? So this is my page, test page for UTSC. I mean, obviously, like you would go and customize the page so the look of the page is, is nice and all on brand. But for now, this is what it is. In addition, if you had an Instagram account going, you would have connected it in the business manager settings where we connected, where we created an account, where we connected our page, uh, where you give admin rights to different people. You would have also um, connected your Instagram ad account. For now, we're just going to simply fall on our Facebook page. Uh, create an ad. We're going to use single image or video for that. Let's clear if anything shows up here for you. Um, I'm going to add media. I'm going to add video. It will show me the, it should, I hope it populates the videos we've uploaded. Um, but you should be able to find the video you've uploaded. Uh, no, it doesn't show the video. Mm, or it does. Oh, it does. Yeah, it was named static. My bad. I should have renamed it when I was. Um, yeah, it's a it's a yeah. OK, perfect. All right. You can also, one important aspect is if you're actually going to be creating videos and assets and uploading them, is customizing the asset size for placement. Um, as I mentioned before, there's one for one size that fits like six placements. Uh, and then there is three placements that are nine by 16. We didn't, um, Canva Pro doesn't, like you need Canva Pro to simply create from static that is square to a vertical you need canva pro in order to resize quickly your asset that you created in one size into another but if you were to go and just create um, a 1080 by 1920 size image in the same like same content but just resize it then you would upload it here like you would have said i want to add it a placement you would click here and then you would have uploaded a different size video that will only apply to story placement. Because if you don't, then this square one will, will be visible, will try to show up on stories, which are gonna look like this in a preview, you can see that. Like it's not gonna look really well on stories because it's a square versus the vertical, right? It's, it's a bit chopped, like it's gonna have a bunch of like background color and the text is gonna show up here. See, like it doesn't look good. But if we recreated that video, in uh, a vertical spec, 1080 by 1920, you will, it would have fit right in. Okay, that's something to keep in mind, is to create enough assets in the right size. Um, and just letting you know, Dennis, we're just over the um, 145, 148 mark. Um, so we wanna make sure we have a few questions, um, time for okay. that at the end as well. Excellent. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna run through like the very last portion of it because essentially once we create once we finish creating this with putting some copy uh, which some copy will go here uh, a headline uh, bold headline goes here so copywriting uh, is a totally different beast as well there's different ways to write copy for different stages of your funnel for awareness for consideration and conversion uh, i don't want to spend time on that right now but um and then for the website i'll just use nike i mean if it was my website i would have just wrote it there but for now just to get the actual ad published i would just use nike and since it's an awareness ad i might just say my call to action might be learn more uh, there's a lot of different call to actions to choose from but uh, typically when you're like 
create an awareness. You just want to say, you know, maybe learn more, listen, listen now, uh, see menu if you're promoting something from the food. But like, that's essentially what the ad will look like uh, with some copy going here, uh, some copy going above the ad in newsfeed. So copy goes here and the headline goes here. Your display URL will go here for your website and the CTA button. So if a user clicks on the video or on the button, they will be taken to this website. Okay. So this is how my ad will look like. We don't have a pixel to track activity beyond the, uh, beyond the click, but if we did have a pixel, we would enable it and it would show me additional events that are happening on the website. Okay. So we're finalizing this ad. We're going to finalize the publish. It will basically create our first campaign containing one ad set, containing one ad. Okay. And here it is. One important thing before we move on. Once it publishes, I'm going to have to all ask you all to in to to make your um to make your where is it? Yeah. To make this campaign inactive. Okay? Deactivate it. Cuz if you keep it active in, a, in an account that has spending limit, it might you might run you might run that ad you might actually run and spend the money whatever the money you set up but just deactivate it make sure it's gray and once we're all done uh once the the, the seminar is done you can just delete it by just like clicking right next to it and then hovering over and deleting you can delete that campaign but what's inside is this is the campaign we created this is the ad set we have who it targets what placements we chose, what interest it has, what demographics it has. And inside that ad set, there's one ad. Okay. We don't have the time to create additional campaign or do additional ad sets, but uh, you would imagine me basically duplicating this ad set that I just made. I would just duplicate that create a one that looks exactly like that, but would just target mail. And when I created that ad set for mail, I would just go, go on an ads level and swapped out the creative that I have with a female um, you know, training and put the mail in their training, okay? This would be the difference, the only difference between the two ad sets. And of course you can have multiple creatives per ad set. I can populate that one with a static ad as well um, and therefore, this is how you basically build the, the setup of your campaign, multiple ad sets, and even more ads inside of it. All right. I think that's pretty much it then, because I want to leave some, some time for questions and want to wrap it up. Perfect. Thank you, Dennis. So we have um, at least one question um, right now in the chat. If there's any others, please make sure that you are writing them down. Um, but the question was, if you had any advice for someone starting a new business um, and how they might use Facebook ads um, in that situation. Um, yeah, um, well, my advice, well, I guess my advice would be is um, just first is like understand do a bit of research um, trying to, well, first is like do a research on, you know, who you want to target, who is your audience, um, do a bit of um, prep work on when you're going to run ads, where you're going to run, what landing pages you're going to use, what website pages you're going to use, uh, what they're going to say, are they mobile friendly, are they mobile optimized, do they run fast on mobile? Before you basically run ads, there's a whole lot of things you need to check off to be, you know, not to be like, make sure you're going to succeed. You you never know if you're going to succeed, but just to put you in a position of, you know, a likelihood of success when you run ads. Because when you run ads, it's like, it's the actual money. And people who are, let's say, coming from an ad that, you know, lends on a mobile experience that is clunky, that has bad imagery, that has no videos, that doesn't explain, doesn't sell anything, they're going to leave. And you just paid for that person. So before you activate paid anything, find enough, you know, uh, find enough uh, ways to maybe do organic, promote content, build content first, build quality content, build a build nice looking website, build nice looking, uh, you know, Facebook page, 
populate images for Instagram, videos, do some testimonials, beef it up before you activate and turn uh, paid campaigns. Because with paid, it's going to take time, it's going to take a bit of patience, and it's going to take a bit of money. So you just need to plan ahead before you activate paid. But don't just jump into starting ads when you have so many different things not in order. Awesome. I think that's really helpful advice. Um, Kristen is asking if the ad campaign creation process is the same on Instagram. I believe that it is, but you can yeah. confirm. Yeah, it will be the same. If you want to run ads specifically on Instagram, when we were in the ad set stage, when I selected all placements and it says recommended, there's another one that you can say um, you can uh, select specific placements. So if you want, it will show up in it will it will give you mobile placements and desktop, and there's going to be check marks. So you can select Instagram only if you want to. Another question from Caleb um, was about what you might recommend for someone starting to start a photography or videography business um, and using Facebook ads. I don't know if you have experience there, but. Um. Uh, well, I think first is like portfolio, right? Like your visual identity. I think uh, a lot of photographers and videographers, what they kind of not don't do well is like they're positioning, like they don't have a position. They don't have like a brand. They just put photos of the clients right but you need positioning you need to brand yourself in a certain way you need and then i think instagram is your vehicle really stories yeah. is your vehicle like facebook not so much maybe but instagram for sure and you can set up a shop so you can have packages the digital packages of photography offered right on instagram via uh, shops and it's a new feature that just enabled for uh, small businesses so uh, Google Facebook shops and you'll you'll you can get started there. I think we're going to have one last question. Um, so from Violet, she's asking for those looking to develop more digital marketing skills, what other resources other than um, what you've already shared in terms of Facebook blueprint um, might you recommend? Um, I would suggest you um, you follow us on uh, you follow Abacus on LinkedIn. We do a lot of um, master classes that uh, provide a ton of value. Um, I would suggest you follow a few people on LinkedIn that post um, some good stuff and good tips. Um, and then I think you can use some of like Skillshare, you can use, um, you know, uh, BrainStation, you can do the courses there that are practical and that are led by industry experts. Some of our team members actually teach at BrainStation as well. So I would just recommend you go to like you go to the experts, not just like broad general reading. Like you go to experts and you do hands-on stuff, workshops and, and so on. And Blueprint is a good way to start for sure. Awesome. I think that might be all the time that we have for questions. Um, so I just wanted to say a huge thank you to you, Dennis, um, not only for putting all of this together, but also taking the time out of your Friday afternoon to be here with us. I think it's fair to say that we're all leaving this workshop a little more digital marketing savvy and hopefully be able to put um, some of these skills to use in the near future. So again, thank you for sharing your experience, inviting us into the world of Facebook marketing and answering all of our questions. Um, so I'd like to pass it back to Anurag for his closing words. Wow, what a what an amazing um, afternoon, Dennis. Uh, thank you so much for uh, doing this for us um, and for spending such a big part of your day, um, um, you know, with, with, with all of us. Um, a big thank you to Amelia and to uh, TMG as well for their continued collaboration on uh, Hashtag and uh, to our audience, of course. Um, I hope all of you who attended found your time well spent. Um, see you at our next hashtag event and have a great day, all of you. Thank you. Yeah, and I think one last thing is like my details will be shared. So um, any of you have any specific questions, anything I didn't have time for, like reach out to me. I'll uh, either direct you to some kind of, you know, resource or I can just help you out personally. So uh, don't hesitate. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you so much. We're looking for junior paid social manager as well. So if you have the skills, not after this workshop, but if you have the skills, then please apply. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, Dennis. Thank you. Thank Bye. you.